welcome to our viewers Home Market TV. Uh, this is Shukri Gutier. Uh, today we have a, a historian, a, a lecturer, and an imam, Dr. Abdul Hakim Abdul Abdullah Hakim Quick. And uh, we, our topic today is about uh, the contributions of Black Muslims and the historical aspects of uh, the Black Muslims, and not only in Canada and the West and into the whole world, and the Sunnah of our Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Sheikh Abdullah, welcome to Homeaka TV. Thank you very much. Uh, Sheikh Abdul Hakim uh, Quick is uh, um, uh, the director of outreach of uh, the Council uh, of Imams uh, here in uh, Canada, and uh, also a, the, uh, he's a lecturer, a historian. Um, I cannot um, basically uh, get a short summary of a, a bio about Sheikh uh, Abdullah Hakim Quick. Um, today our topic is uh, uh, Black History Month, but also the Islamic perspective of, of Black History. Um, Sheikh, what does Black History Month mean to you? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam, rasulullah wa ba'd. The concept of Black History here in the West uh, is based on the fact that when the Europeans came to colonize the Americas, mm -hmm. we have to go back in time to the 15th century. Uh, the first groups that came in were the Spanish and then Portuguese, right, and then the British. So the Spanish had been fighting Muslims for about 700 years mm -hmm. in Spain, known as Al-Andalus. Yes, Andalus. And one of the things that they did was they um, not only destroyed uh, towns, but they burnt books because mm -hmm. they were paranoid and afraid of Muslims because Muslim civilization had yeah. advanced so much Absolutely. and the Europeans were in the Dark Ages. So they became paranoid of Muslims in terms of knowledge. And so they would burn all the books, uh, and they used scorched earth policy. Mm -hmm. So when the Spanish now finally defeated the Muslims in 1492 uh, in Granada, uh, they began coming over the seas. Mm -hmm. When they came to the Americas, they found 75 million people living here. That's North, South, Central America. Yes. And um, so what they would do is use their technology. They defeated the native people, and they would burn everything. So every written record they had found from the indigenous people was destroyed. When the British came, and later the French, they didn't burn it, but they took the documents and put it in their libraries. And then they wrote their own history. So the worst thing that was done after the genocide, the mm -hmm. killing of the indigenous people, was yeah. destruction of knowledge. Mm -hmm. And so you look at the three main groups, the native indigenous people, yes. which over 75 million, the Hispanic, Latino indigenous people, Mexico, Central America, mm -hmm. and then African Americans yes. who were brought here as political prisoners and slaves. Slaves, through the slave trade. Through the slave trade, okay? Uh, so mm -hmm. you have these three groups. Yes. The knowledge of their past was being destroyed mm -hmm. uh, by the British and then the other governments. And then they gave a new history, which did not include the real history. The real narrative, basically, are, are the documentations, whoever documents it, put their name on it. It's part of the, some of the steps the colonizers used That's right. to destroy the civilization that existed before them. Yeah, because yeah. when you destroy people's books, mm -hmm. you destroy their memory. Exactly. Right? Yeah. And then you put a new memory. Yeah. Wasn't that part of even giving new names to the slaves? The slaves did not have, they had a British, French, Spanish names. Exactly. Yeah. You know, the African people who came from West Africa and, you know, Angola and these regions mm -hmm. had big empires and uh, one third of the Africans who came were Muslims too. Yeah. So they had Muslim names, they had heritage that dated back over a thousand years, mm -hmm. you know, and all this was lost. Yeah. So therefore, it was around 1926 that African American scholar, um, his name was Carter, Dr. Carter uh, G. Woodson he started what is called Black History Week. And he chose February, yes. not because of the month, because it's the shortest month and it's the coldest month. It's right? the coldest That's month. That's the opposite of Africa, right? <laughs> exactly. But yeah. because Abraham Lincoln, mm -hmm. right, whose Emancipation Proclamation freed the slaves, yes. was born on February 12th, and Frederick Douglass, who was a great African-American fighter for freedom, mm -hmm. he was born on February 14th. So that's why they chose February. Okay. Later, the U.S. government adopted it as Black History Month, yes. and then in '95, Canadian government also adopted it yes. you know, as a month. So this is a time mm -hmm. where we bring out the true history mm 
mm -hmm. uh, of the um, African people in the West. Yes. And where it intersects with Islam mm -hmm. is that what's happening with Muslims, with Islamophobia, yes. is that also our true history is being destroyed or not included in the textbooks. Sheikh, I'm, I'm glad you brought that up. How do we address issues uh, with Islamophobia while being black? So, so this is an interesting point mm -hmm. because you know there's, there's, there's sort of a connection between the two Absolutely. in the sense that um, many of the slaves and political prisoners were black, were, were Muslim anyway, right? Mm -hmm. And um, you know, for the, for the powers of, of, of the Western countries, you know, they see Islam now on the rise. Yes. So therefore, there's a fear in their heart mm -hmm. uh, of Islam, the same fear they have of the slaves making revolution or of the indigenous people taking back their land. Mm -hmm. It's the same fear. So the same process that was done to the indigenous people, to the Latino people, to the African people, is also now happening to Muslims. Yes. So now there's an intersection because if you're Muslim and you're black, yeah. now you got two strikes. Exactly, and that you, multiple right. identity. And if you're a woman, mm -hmm. you got three strikes. There you go. That so now that's a, that's a serious struggle if you're black, woman, and Muslim. Yeah, so this is what we're looking at now. And, and the Muslim community is just waking up. Mm -hmm. and, and, and a strange phenomenon is happening here, which I think is good. Yes. Because of this struggle against racism, we are noticing in the Muslim community mm -hmm. there are forms of tribalism and racism. Within, yes. So the now tribal, we have yeah. known this is a problem amongst us. Mm -hmm. And it was from the time of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they Salaam. battled against racism. That's the reason why you know, Bilal is out front. Yeah. And the Prophet Sallallahu then said, That's even if your leader is you know, a black man from Ethiopia, obey him. Sheikh, I'm glad you brought up uh, Bilal radiallahu anhu. Um, in Islam, we know there's a lot of Sahabas that were black, uh, but uh, a lot of them are not documented and we're not taught in our schools um, about their history and their contributions to Islam. Right. Uh, so can you mention some of that? Yeah, so this is interesting now because, you know, normally as Muslims, we don't bring out race. Mm -hmm. Because you know we're one ummah and you know we don't deal with it. Yeah. However, there's a thing called nesab, and that's your genealogy. Mm -hmm. And nesab is important. You're supposed to know what your tribe is, mm -hmm. where you come from. So it is part of identity. Yes. And because identity has been stolen in the West, or it has been distorted, mm -hmm. therefore now you know it's important for you know black Muslims to understand their identity, mm -hmm. and also for other Muslims to understand. Uh, what is really, you know, the role of black Muslims and, yes. you know, uh, what have they done in Islamic history? Absolutely. I found mm -hmm. on um, McMaster University in Ryerson mm -hmm. that there were some African Muslim students that when they came into the MSA, yeah. you know, and they're, you know, Muslim, right? Maybe from Somalia, maybe from Nigeria, yes. whatever. Mm -hmm. Then somebody from Pakistan or Lebanon or Syria, they would look at them and say, are you a Muslim? Look at that. Because, yeah. because you're black, you don't look Pakistani or you don't look Arab. Yeah, Arab. So they say like, are you a Muslim? That's, and this yeah. hurts the person Absolutely. You know, who has this identity. So what we did now is we went back with other scholars. A number of researches have been done. And now what we are bringing out to the surface mm -hmm. is that African Muslims were actually part of the original community before Islam went to Lebanon, before it Absolutely. went to Pakistan, yeah. before it went, it went to, to, to India, to, and it India. actually went yeah. to Africa. This dates back to the fifth year after the prophethood, That's when Prophet so. Muhammad Sallallahu and his companions were being, you know, tortured. He sent them to Al Habasha, yes, right, which yeah. is present-day Eritrea, yeah. Ethiopia, Ethiopia, to Aksum, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and in Aksum they found Ashama al Najashi, yes. who was the ruler of the, of the Aksumite Empire at the mm -hmm. time, and al Najashi. The Negus, yeah. actually, uh, he was Tigray man, so they say Nagash in Tigray, Nagash, yeah. right? Yeah. So the Nagash, his name was Ashama. Mm -hmm. He, um, the Prophet ﷺ said, go to Al Habasha, yeah. because there is a king who will not tolerate oppression. A fair. And, and then the Prophet yeah. said, wa hiya ardu sitq. Mm -hmm. It is a land of truth. 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 Think about this powerful. now. So the Prophet is saying, mm -hmm. Africa mm -hmm. is a land of truth. Absolutely. Absolutely. So he did not send them to Yemen. He didn't send them to Medina. To he didn't send Syria, them to Iraq. Lebanon. He yeah. sent them into Africa. Yes. Okay. That's, That's how far hard. back Africa goes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Ashama gave them sanctuary. Mm -hmm. They stayed there. Yeah. 
now we're finding out that when uh, Asama died, he had embraced Islam. Mm -hmm. So the Prophet ﷺ made uh, Salat al Janaz al Ghaib, you know, Janazah prayer for an absent person. Absent, yeah. Right? And Najashi now is one of our great heroes. Mm -hmm. Right? His grave is still there in the town of Nagash in yeah. Ethiopia. Yeah. Fifteen Sahabas died there as well. Their graves are there. Mm -hmm. So this is a great African Muslim leader. Yeah. One of the key points is, mm -hmm. because Muslims get attacked many times, they say, oh, you Arabs, you went to Africa looking for slaves, mm, right? Yes, yes, because the, that happened before the, the slavery, before the European right. colonization. Now look at this, came. the Muslims yeah. entered Africa as yeah. refugees, mm. just like refugees are coming to Canada now. Yes. Yeah. Muslims were refugees, yeah. African Christian took them in yeah. and cooperated with the Prophet of Islam. So that shows that you know Muslims can cooperate with Christians. Mm, it also showed that Africa was a homeland for Islam, yes. even before Syria, Iraq, mm -hmm. Yemen, mm -hmm. Pakistan, Indonesia, Turkey. Yeah. The first home was in Africa. Now, yeah. let's add something onto this. Mm -hmm. When the great Hijrah was called to Medina, it is recorded that 32 Abyssinians left with the Muhajireen and they went to Medina. So in the early generation now, in Medina, mm -hmm. and this is something that dawned on me this year, yes. this is a really important point. Mm -hmm. The early generation in Medina yes. was made up mainly of Arabs, Hijazi Arabs, mm. Meccans yes. and Medinans, Aus and Khazraj. Yes. There were also the, Yemenis, the, the, there were the, Yemenis the, there the, also, the, yes. right, some Yemenis, mm -hmm. and Ethiopians. Oh, that's amazing. That was the basic first community. Mm -hmm. You have a few people from the outside, like Salman al-Farisi, the Persian, the, the yes. Suhaib al-Rumi, right, the Roman who was Iraqi origin. Mm -hmm. But the, the first generation, that was basically Hijazi Arabs, yes. some Yemen, yes. and Africans. Africans, that's very This is the original yes. Muslims. Sheikh, why we're not being taught in our schools? Our kids, because we know the mainstream schools don't teach proper Black History Month, and when they address it, they talk about the Underground Railway, Harriet Tubman, stuff, stuff like that. Right. But we know that even in, in within the Islamic schools, there's internal racism that, or prejudice, I would call it, that happens internally. That our schools don't take the time to teach young people, and I about the leaders and the iconic leaders and the Sahabas that were Black the time well you know I mean I don't it's not always a bad intention mm -hmm. it's more ignorance yeah because within our school systems if you're from Pakistan yes. right they will teach you the great heroes uh, Muhammad bin Qasim who went to the Sindh and, you know how um, you know uh, it formed if you're Indonesian they will teach you about the great Malays if you're yes. Turkish they will teach you about the Ottoman Sultans Empire, and whatnot yeah. right so everybody learns Islam from the perspective of their nation and usually they're ignorant of um, what happened in the early generation because they just learn a little sira and uh, like that. So everybody yes. says, Ethiopia, Bilal. Yes. Right? But yeah. you know what yeah. they don't know? Mm -hmm. And this is a shock to most people. Bilal ibn Rabah, he okay. had a brother. His name was Khalid ibn Rabah. Khalid ibn Rabah. Yeah. Who was Sahabi, Jalil, Sahabi. Yes. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. How many people know that Bilal had a sister? Her name yes. was Ghafira bin Rabah. Ghafira bin Rabah. She was a great Sahabi. How many people know this? Now, yeah. we don't bring this out because we don't normally bring out things because of tribe. However, because of racism mm -hmm. and because of tribalism, even yeah. amongst ourselves, yes. we need to bring this out. Absolutely. We also need to let them know that the Prophet Sallallahu when he was a young person at six years old, his mother Amina died. Yes, and, and when she was dying, she said to her dry nurse, uh, whose name was uh, Um Ayman, yeah. right? Baraka said, "Take this boy, take him as your son." Yes. And she from was that time, mom, she was the second mother of the Prophet. Of the Prophet was a black female. Even afterwards, she was freed. She got married, uh, and then had a son, Osama. Right? She married Zaid. She had the son named Osama, mm. and she was a freed person. But she stayed close to the Prophet Sallallahu And when they made Hijrah. And she came into Medina, the Prophet then moved there and he said, Ummi, Ya Ummi. He called her my mother. mother yes. And he actually wiped her feet mm -hmm. and he wiped off the dust from her. 
She was an elderly person at that, by that time, okay. but he, he treated her like his mother. Yes. Now, if you believe in racism, if you believe the Prophet Muhammad was a white man, Alayhi right, and Arabs are supposed to look down on black people, you got a problem here. Absolutely, absolutely. Because the reality was, mm -hmm. they did not look at color like people look at it today. Yeah. And, and he respected people of all colors, especially black people. He even, you know, gave special positions. Another great Sahabi, uh, of course, there is uh, Usama ibn Zaid, mm -hmm. right, who, who was a leader of the army at 16. There was also Salim Mola Abi Hudayfa, mm -hmm. who was one of the top five Quran readers. Mashallah. He's actually African person. There was Muhammad ibn Maslama, who was called the Knight of the Prophet. He was from Medina, but he was described as not Aus al Khazraj. He was a black man. Okay? There is uh, Murith. There is Muhajah. Yeah. There is a, a number of Sahabi yes. who are yeah. actually black people. Mm -hmm. Now, these, along with the 32 Abyssinians who came yeah. right across. Mm -hmm. So what that means is that if you were in early Medina period, right, the black person was like a normal Muslim. Yes. yes. Every other person that you saw was a black person, right? Yeah, and, and it was not till later on mm -hmm. that lighter skinned people came into Islam. That's the reason why when the uh, Lisan al-Arab, which is, which is the what the top dictionary of Arabic, yes. when it describes the Ajami people, it talks about red or Benu Asfar. Yes, yes. Right, the yellow, yellow or the red people. Yeah. When it talks about Arabs, it actually says brown and black. And black. Yeah. Adami. That's how the Arabs were described. Adami. Yes, yes. So the original Arabs are darker skinned people, yes. and the other people who later came into Islam are the lighter skinned people. Yeah, so Arab Mustariba. And Arab Ariba, right. the original Arabs were, were darker very diverse, skin, darker skin. Right, but mainly a darker skinned people. Yeah. Yes. So now, because of years that went by, mm -hmm. other nations coming in, and then European colonialism, where white is right, white is on top. Mm -hmm. So racism came into the mind of the Muslims. And so now they try to turn it around, mm -hmm. right, to mean that the white is the top and the black is the bottom. But this is against the teachings of Islam. Exactly. Because we are not into color, and the, the darker skinned people were actually respected by Prophet Muhammad on a high level. Absolutely, absolutely. Sheikh, I'm glad that's a wealth of knowledge, and I hope it continues. And um, you and uh, the leaders and the doctors can make it, put it forward to teach our young youth. Uh, when it comes to the Canadian uh, perspective, uh, there is a struggle with intersectionality and multiple identities within one individual. Right. Um, and in particular, uh, the black people within Canada, I would divide them into three sections. So there is the um, black Canadians that have been here from generations to generations. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, there are more Canadian than, than anything else. Um, and then there's also the immigrants. And there is the new group. Uh, some of them are immigrants. Some of them are refugees. And uh, also because some of the kids are born here. So when I mentioned that, the, the, the point is they identify differently yeah. within their blackness, right? So why is it important like, to showcase on a month like this yeah. uh, in February? Well, you know, it, it's important. Um, we are not into black nationalism. However, mm -hmm. Africa itself yeah. is a diverse continent. Absolutely. So you'll find Southern Africans, East Africans, mm -hmm. West Africans, North Africans. Yeah. You'll find people of different complexions and different nationalities. That's what it is to be African, right? Yes. When the Europeans made the slave trade in the Atlantic slave trade, mm -hmm. they used color as a means of justifying slavery and keeping people in slavery. Mm -hmm. So back in the 17th century, they, they had certain laws called the Black Codes. And they said anybody who is not a European is a slave. Mm -hmm. So therefore, when they look at people of color now, they look at everybody the same. So when we use the word black, like black history, yes. it means somebody who identifies with Africa. Myself, I, I am considered a black American, yes. right? Although my skin is lighter complexion, yes. but I'm considered black American because the majority of my parents were Africans, yes. right? So therefore, that's you know Malcolm X, the famous leader. Yes. He had red hair. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And he was light skinned. So when he went to Africa, and they looked at him and they said, what? Because he's blacker than anyone in Africa, right? In terms of his talk. Yes, the way he talked, the language. But here, yeah. Yeah. 
it's not just pigmentation. It do you relate to the African continent? You see? Absolutely. And you are non-European relating to the African continent. Mm -hmm. That is what we mean by black. Yes. So some people say now African American. Yes. So they use that terminology, African Canadian. Isn't it a better term to use it as African diaspora? Because part of the formation of the African diaspora, as you stated, it started from the Atlantic slave trade. Right. They came through. So there are people in the Caribbean that are also part of the African Same diaspora. Thing. Uh, and identify with Africa. That's right. So, but now, where the struggle is, mm -hmm. is that we, the African Americans here, yeah. when I say Americans, I mean Canada, Caribbean, South America. Yes. We have accepted that being African American or black means you, you can be a number of different colors. Yes. But in Africa itself, it's not the same. You're so in Africa right. itself, there's mm -hmm. different nations and different tribes. Yes. So a Southern African may be different than an East African. Right? So, the, so now where the struggle is now, where the yes. challenge is, yes. is that when the African comes from Africa here, yes. you're all black. That's a very good point, Sheikh. You see, you're not a Somali, yes. you're not an Ethiopian. A lot of our viewers are, are Somali Canadians, right? That's right. Or, or are Somali diaspora in general. So um, we have this discussion a lot of the times, and especially the older generation, if you tell them you're black, they don't identify with blackness. But unfortunately, they need to understand that society, when they look at them, they identify them as a black person. I'm exactly. A black person, but and alhamdulillah, I, have, I love my Somali community. Thank when you. the Somalis came to the Jami Mosque, yeah. I was there. Yeah. So I know Ishaq, Hawiya, Darod, Meddibani. Oh, you know I know all the, the secrets, then. right? I know <laughs> the secrets of the tribes, right? Yes. And um, so therefore, you know, with all love in my heart, I recognize mm -hmm that there is also jarir, yes. people who are called Minorities. adon, adon. Yes. Yeah. and that word adon was being used. Mm -hmm. right? Now this may be the Bantu type people, mm -hmm. as different than nomadic people. So you yes. have nomadic Somali tribes, the bones, the bones. Right? Yes, who are yes. moving in Ethiopian nomadic, and then you have agricultural type of Bantu people, yes. another African nation. Mm -hmm. So the nomadic conquers the agriculture, yes. and he controls him, so he said adon. Right? Yeah. So now when you come here to Canada and they, and they see the Jamaicans, right, who are revolutionaries. Yeah. Jamaica is with the Very most revolutionary play who fought slavery yeah. for centuries. Absolutely. And many great leaders, you know, of the black struggle are Jamaicans. Abs absolutely. So therefore, yeah. when the Somalis first came yeah. and the youth saw them and they say, Adon, right? It doesn't work, man, because because the Jamaicans are revolutionaries. They are. Now what has happened? Yeah. After being here for a period of time, and the system of racism, who does not care whether you are Bantu, Somali, Moroccan, Nigerian, yes. they don't care. Yes. If you're Africa and you got color in your skin, you're, you're black. black. And you're going That's down. A, yep. a whole generation has now arisen yes. who has recognized what is actually happening here, that they are considered to be black people. Okay, so this generation that is coming up, okay, now recognizes the need. Absolutely. So we need education. Yeah. We need to educate um, both sides. Mm -hmm. So we all recognize that we are, you know, Afro African Canadians, yeah. African Americans. Yeah. There are some African Canadians who came here during the slave time. They escaped American slavery and they came to Canada, mm -hmm. and they live in communities in Nova Scotia. Also yes. in Windsor by the Detroit border, the uh, Africville community, a Freakville. Yeah, so they yeah. had communities there. Those are Afro Canadians, right? Yes. There are also uh, can, uh, Africans who came from uh, the Caribbean region, from yes. Trinidad, yes. Grenada, yeah. Jamaica. Yeah. There's also Africans who came from Haiti, mm -hmm. right? There's some that come from Brazil, yes. right? Some come from the United States, like myself, right? So this is all the diaspora. And, and we are all suffering under racism. Absolutely, because as far as the system, that's a very key point. When it comes to microaggression or racism and issues that impact um, any of the aspects, any of, it doesn't matter where you come from. That's right. You are identified as a black individual, therefore you do experience the same systemic racism and those impact you. That's right. Regardless of how you identify yourself. Um, Doctor, uh, as a historian, uh, you have mentioned the, how the Canadian formation of it. Um, the, the immigrants came after the 1960s, um, I believe, in Canada because there was some sort of uh, immigration policy that was yeah. a bit racist back then. Mm -hmm. 
uh, that was basically banning people that to come from Africa directly. Yeah. Uh, and uh, that's a part of the huge formation of the, uh, the black diaspora community. Here. Okay, well to take it back, yeah. actually, um, immigrants came mm -hmm. from the Muslim world back in the early 20th century. Mm -hmm. Because when Canada, um, you know, had formed and they bought uh, uh, Northwest Territories from the Hudson Bay Company. Because mm -hmm. Canada was just Upper and Lower Canada and the Eastern side. Mm -hmm. So they bought this huge territory from the Hudson Bay. Mm -hmm. And um, they needed to now send wagon trains out there. So they had a relationship with the Ottoman Turkish Empire. Ottomans were this, one of the biggest empires in the world at that time. Yeah, Dolil Uthmaniyah. Right. Mm -hmm. So the Uthmanis, but the system was racist. So they said, we don't want red people, we don't want yellow, we don't want brown, we don't want black. We need um, white-skinned people. It's apartheid, right? Mm. So the Ottomans said, okay, we have some white-looking people who can come here. So therefore, Syrians, Lebanese, Albanians, mm -hmm. Turkish, they came with the wagon trains that went to the Midwest. Therefore, you have big Arab communities in Alberta, Edmonton, Alberta, yes. Calgary, the oldest mosque, a Rashid mosque, is in Midwest. Yes, yeah. That's because the Arabs were here, were here mm -hmm. from the Ottoman Empire, right? Yeah. Later in the 20th century, Palestinians came when the Nakba came, when the great catastrophe came in Palestine. Many, some Palestinians also fled to this part of the world. Mm -hmm. Then you have waves that are coming in the 60s now. So this is professionals who come in, and then later from the uh, disaster zones, mm -hmm. you have uh, refugees who are coming in. So these are the waves that are now coming in. It is in the, in the, fi in the last waves, yes. coming in more towards 70s, 80s, 90s. This is of, where you get more yeah. African uh, Muslims yes. who are coming in from Nigeria, yes. from Somalia. And those Ethiopia, were the elites Nigeria. back then that were immigrating. Right. It was mainly the uh, elites you yes. know, who are coming in into the community. Now mm -hmm. it's it expanded. Of course, the community expanded. Yes. And so this is the melting pot that we're in. And what we're saying is, is this. Number one, we are fortunate as Muslims because Islam breaks down tribalism. Yes. And you know, we should be able to look at other tribes in a positive way through Absolutely. our Islam. But if you can't do that, then at least realize that if you are uh, African here, whether Somali, Ethiopian, whether you're uh, uh, you know, Tanzanian, Nigerian, Uganda, whatever it is, in the eyes of the racist system, mm -hmm. You are all the same. same. Yeah. Yeah. They don't care mm -hmm. if your hair is a little bit straighter or your nose is a little bit longer. They don't care. African is an African to them. Absolutely. And this is a serious lesson for us to learn yeah. because anyway, we know that according to Islam, in the akramakum and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said the best amongst you is the one who has the best uh, taqwa, piety. Yeah. So we know this. Absolutely. But we have to accept the importance of African history, yes. the importance of African contributions to Islam, mm -hmm. and also what can we do as a community here yes. to assist the indigenous people and the African people yes. who are suffering. We need to identify with their struggle and identify with what is happening even right here in Canada. Yeah. As Sheikh Abdullah Hakim, uh, we thank you very much for your valuable time. Uh, uh, that you came on Hormarka. Uh, Dr. Abdullah Hakim Quick is not only uh, an imam, he is a historian and a wealth of knowledge. And uh, our viewers, we thank you that you watching this episode with us. There's more to come, inshallah ta'ala, in the near future. Thanks to uh, our main sponsor, Isra Restaurant, uh, that we're filming here today. And uh, my name is Shukri Guchir. Uh, here we have our producer director, Abdekarim AK. And uh, thank you so much, our viewers. وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته